Hi everyone, Natasha here and around my home today I am in my dining room. It is Tuesday. It's time for another Tiny Tidy Tuesday and this is a very special one. So stay tuned to find out more and welcome to my dining room. Welcome back to my home. I'm so glad you're joining me today. We have had a very cool, cloudy, sort of drizzly start to the day, which I am loving. It feels like fall, but I'm also moving pretty slow. My daughter's getting over a cold and we didn't have a great night of sleep. So I'm moving slow and working on some more English breakfast tea. Anytime I really feel like I can't get motivated, then having some black tea is my little secret weapon. It, makes me feel a little better and helps me feel like I can just get started and get moving and don't have to sit there trying to find some motivation. <laughs> so I'm going to be sipping on my tea and I wanted to share something special with you today because today is box number 52 in my basement declutter project. And of course, this is still part of the fun collaboration hosted by the lovely Sunday Dawn and I will have her channel the helpful home linked below as well as the playlist so you can see all of the other tiny tidiers. It's a great chance to get some motivation and inspiration. If you like to work alongside someone, have some nice music to listen to, then just putting the playlist on and getting busy is a great way to get some stuff done and feel like you have someone cleaning and organizing and decluttering right alongside you. So now since it's a special tiny tidy for me, since it's one year that I've been doing these basement declutters one box at a time, I thought I'd share a little bit of backstory as to how we got here before we head to the basement and declutter one more box. So I discovered this playlist through my friend Sarah over at The Silver Lining, and I'll have her channel in the description below. And I'm so grateful, and I'm also so grateful to Sunday Dawn because Finding the Tiny Tidies was just what I needed to help me finally get moving on a project that I have been talking about doing and writing in my planner for years. We've been in this house for 11 years now, and I love it. It's my dream house. I can't imagine living anywhere else. It's a 100-year-old arts and crafts style home out in the Midwest. We live in wine country. We're in a tiny town of only about 200 people. And even though we live right next to the center of town, we feel like we're still kind of out in the country. So I love it. My husband loves it. My daughter loves growing up here. She can walk to the library, walk to school. We can walk to lots of little local events and wineries, but we still feel like when we come home, we have our own little refuge and place to rejuvenate and refresh ourselves. And it just feels like home. So when we moved in, my husband and I were passionate about getting a family business started. That was one of the reasons why we bought this home. So he had his day job, I had my day job. We were both still working full time. We moved in and within two months, we had our family business up and running out of our home. And mostly we were doing it on weekends, but it really meant we sort of dove headfirst into the business and as we moved things in and sort of got settled, we focused on the areas of the home that were specific to the business use, but things like the basement never really got organized. We just shoved boxes down there. I think the first year I sort of collected these shelving units so I would have some sense of organization, but I never really had any plan about what got put on the shelves and I kept thinking I would do it later. And if you follow the fly lady, then you know, this is something she talks about a lot too, that dreaded do it later. We tell ourselves we're gonna do it later and then we just never get around to later. And I am terrible at that. I'm still terrible at it, but over the years I've learned some tips and tricks just to keep moving on projects even though I tell myself I'm gonna do it later. Maybe someday I'll stop doing that, but that's just how my brain works. So that's what I do. So anyway, fast forward a few years, my daughter is born. So then we're still running the family business. I decide to be a stay at home mom with my newborn daughter. My husband's still working full time and our priorities go to lots of things, including our daughter and still running the family business. 
but the basement is just gradually getting more cluttered and more filled and less and less organized. And it was something that bothered me, but I was able to keep the main floor of the home mostly clean. That was our focus. And so I just kept shoving the basement off as another project I would do later. Well, now my daughter is nine years old and over the last four or five years, especially when things changed and we were all home several years ago, I really thought, okay, this will be my chance and I'll get this basement decluttered. But at that point, it had become such a big project. It was so overwhelming. I could never really make progress. There were a few times where I went down there and told myself I was going to just spend the day working on decluttering and organizing the basement. And I moved things around and made a little bit of progress, but I never really felt like I got anywhere. And then I was exhausted and didn't want to do it again for six months or more. And that's something that the fly lady talks about is it's sometimes we have that tendency to make things into a big project and feel like we'll make so much more progress if we just spend the day or spend several hours working on something. But in the end, we wear ourselves out and then we lose the motivation and the momentum to keep going. So it doesn't help us in the long run because we've made such a big project out of things. So I knew that was my problem. Like I said, I had been writing in my planner for years that I needed to declutter the basement and I had been thinking about it and talking about it. And finally, when my friend Sarah told me she was joining along with this collaboration to do these tiny tidies, first I just kind of jumped in and thought, oh yes, this will be good. It'll be a chance for me to sort of keep tidying up my home and share it with others. And I love having the accountability of sharing a video on YouTube every week because it makes me get it done. And finally, I had sort of gone through the areas of the main living spaces where I thought I could do some tidying up and it was time to pick a new space to work in. And with no plan, one day I just thought, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna start on my basement and I'll share it on these tiny tidies and maybe that way I'll get some progress done and actually finally work on my basement. So it has been a year now, every week on Tuesday as part of this collaboration, I declutter just one box. Some weeks it's a big declutter, some weeks all I'm doing is looking to see what's in the box and then moving it to a different shelf in the basement. But in doing this process over the last year, I have found some momentum back. And by doing just one box a week, it has felt like a very manageable and doable project. I often do these in the morning before I head off to work or in the afternoon when I've gotten home from work and my daughter's done her homework and we just have a couple of hours of downtime before it's time for dinner. And so by making it a small project and having the accountability of sharing it here, I've been able to keep going for a year and while my basement is nowhere near finished and there's still so many more boxes and so many more areas that need to be decluttered and organized, every time I go down there and I see the bank of shelving units where I know I've gone through those items, I've decluttered, I've created some systems and some organization where I know what's on each shelf, what types of things are stored together, and I know what I'm keeping. It has given me so much more peace of mind and I don't really care that I probably will keep doing this for another year or maybe not. I don't know. I really have no long-term plan on this. I just know that if I don't keep making some progress every week, it'll go back to how it was before where I felt overwhelmed and frustrated and I never seemed to get going. So I'm going to keep going. We're going to head to the basement. I'm gonna have another sip of tea. I'm not going to set the timer since I think what's down there is gonna be pretty quick and easy. I'll show you a little bit of the progress that I've made so far. Unfortunately, I didn't have a plan, so I didn't take any sweeping pictures or videos of what the basement looked like before. And maybe I'll show you what is coming ahead and what is still left to declutter because then you will get a sense of just how big this project is. So let's head to the basement. So these are two things I know that we're keeping. My daughter plays with this Play-Doh set every once in a while, and I know the last time I asked her, which was maybe two months ago, she said she still wanted to keep it. This is just a set of foam blocks, and they store pretty nicely in this container. 
that they came in and so I'm fine keeping these. I feel like these are one of those universal long-term toys you can keep around that anytime you have kids over they'll enjoy playing with those. So I'm going to add these to our shelf I think. Let's see if I can keep this is our box of Play-Doh, so I'm going to add the Play-Doh set here if it'll fit. Maybe. There. Okay. So now we have Play-Doh stored together. We still have this box, which is just sort of our catch-all for the time being. I've got my blocks added. And now this is the box that I pulled that does need to be decluttered. So what's in here is basically purses and bags. Some of these are my old purses, and I know that I just need to go through this with my daughter and see if there's anything she wants to keep and what's left could either be donated or maybe even pitched. I think this was just a gift bag from a birthday present at some point. So this will go upstairs in the kitchen and we'll just work on that this afternoon. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of my basement. So this is what you are used to seeing. We have this bank of shelves along the one wall in the basement. This is the original basement, so it's a 100-year-old basement. It does have concrete walls and concrete floor. I'm not sure when the floor was added, but the concrete walls are original as the foundation. They do leak in some spots when it rains from the north, so we have to be mindful of that. So I keep my shelving units pulled forward away from the wall in the back so that if there's any water running down that wall, it doesn't touch anything that's on the shelves. So this has become the shelving unit where I'm keeping some electronics, some kitchen overflow, and then on the bottom is sentimental boxes plus one box of office supplies. This next shelf is a collection of mostly my arts and crafts and sewing supplies, plus this is a little section where we're keeping some projects for later. This is a long-term project we'll talk about at a different time. On the top, what I have is basically some of the electronics and kitchen overflow, and it's just things that I've talked to my husband, we know we're keeping, so they're just staying up there. Some of them only fit on the top shelf, so that's why they're there. Then I have my shelf that I like to keep my baskets on and this is working so well because periodically I decide I need a basket for some purpose and I can come down here and just find the perfect basket for what I need and then at the same time if I'm cleaning something out and I decide I no longer need a basket in a space then it just comes back down to the shelf and I know where to find things and I'm also using it as my container so I can't buy any more baskets because I can see that I have plenty to use and I won't have any more space to store things on the shelf. So it's full, the container's full, no more baskets, <laughs> just use what I have. Then we have the next shelf, which is empty. And I know someone had asked why I don't just put the toys on this shelf. And for whatever reason, like I mentioned, I don't have a plan. I think in my mind, I was trying to decide and I thought, well, I'm gonna keep this lighter colored shelf as the toy shelf so that I can tell whoever's looking for toys, go down to that white shelf in the basement because most of the shelves are this dark gray color except for the one on the end. But if I can say that one in the middle that's white has all the toys, then that's kind of an easy way to identify it for anyone who's looking for toys. Plus, by leaving myself this empty shelving unit, I'm giving myself a buffer and I know that as I work on decluttering the rest of the basement, I'm probably gonna have things that I wanna put on this shelf and I didn't want to feel like I didn't have a space for the new things I come across because that's the whole point of this process is I wanted to just feel more organized. So I'm leaving that as a buffer shelf where I can add things to it as I come across it. Now, the rest of the basement, it's kind of hard for me to show the whole sweeping <laughs> panorama. So this is the shelving unit that we're working on currently. So that little bit we just did emptied that shelf out. And then I have another shelf, which is mostly some sentimental things I'm storing from when my daughter was young, plus just some overflow of time will tell bins of toys that she knew she didn't want in her room, but didn't know what to do with. And the items on the very top, those are left over from my college days. That's my portfolio from my interior design degree, which 
we'll work on that in one of our declutters down the road. And the last shelf has all of my Christmas storage and decorations, plus the overflow is the large bins that won't fit anywhere else. And then in the very corner is where we keep our Christmas tree. We don't break it down each year, we just cover it and store it in the basement. So the Christmas stuff, I don't think will need much decluttering because I basically declutter that as I put it out every year. And then when I pack it back up, I take one more look and see if there's things I wanna get rid of. So we're really down to just this one more shelving unit, or as my friend Jenny says, one more season. So that will be season seven. But now let's take a look at just what is waiting for us. So here we have one of the beams that supports the floor up above and two original doors to the house, which we don't use. They just came with the house. I think I know where they both went, but at this point we don't plan to put them back up, but I'm not gonna get rid of them because they're 100 year old doors original to the house. And then there's just a lot of stuff that I don't know what to do with. I think we're keeping, but I'm not sure. This was like a bookshelf that's actually part of a bunk bed set that we don't have the other half of, but I was using it as part of an office space at some point. We have a lot of things left from when my daughter was younger that from time to time she still plays with, with, with her baby dolls and her friends. So we keep it, but I don't know how long we'll end up keeping it and where it's supposed to go. We have sort of organized that this back shelf on the left is where we keep our paint supplies. The next shelf is our cleaning supplies and pool supplies. And we just closed our pool. So now this whole pile is stuff that needs to get packed up and put back on the shelf. And then extra bedding is on the shelf to the right. And it's next to an old washer and dryer set. That's kind of our backup if we need it because they're both pretty old and don't run that great, but they do work. And then in the middle, we have my overflow of bins. So these are the bins that I pull from when I need to do some more organizing. And let me take you around. I'll kind of give you the panoramic from this side of the basement. You can see there's, of course, our HVAC unit. <laughs> some more storage. This was a box of clothing that we got from a cousin that we still need to go through and some overflow of boxes. Down here at the bottom of the steps is where I usually keep my recycling. And I just went through and broke down tons of the boxes that need to go out to the recycling, but I haven't cleaned up this corner. And back behind there is the old cellar door. And I'll have to tell you the story about that some other day, not today. And then this is another pile that has formed. And so this has become like half recycling, half stuff my daughter's taken out of a room, but she wants to keep. And then in the back is, this is my husband's shelving unit where he keeps his keepsakes and electronics that he wants. And then we're back to where we started. And this box in the corner has a collection of rolls of fabric, bolts of fabric that I got from a friend who has a drapery business. And I thought I was gonna sew some beautiful drapery treatments for the windows in our home and I've never gotten around to it. So that's, something else at some point I'll have to decide what to do with. But at least I can say that this side of the basement feels and looks much more organized and it gives me hope that I can get through some of these other piles. I forgot to mention this is just a stack of pictures that I need to either decide if we're going to put them up or put them up on Marketplace to try to sell or donate. This is an antique mirror. When we first moved in, we were just collecting antiques to try to furnish all the rooms. So that one never found a home and I don't know if I'm keeping it or not, but <laughs> we keep our overflow of recycling here and then it just starts to get into more chaos. So. We have stuff for my daughter. We have our deep freeze there. This was my shelf for gift wrap, but it has become overflown and I need to go through that. Some things have been collected on the floor. Some of this is stuff I was gonna declutter and then my daughter found it and now it's not found a home back. And then my husband has some tools in the corner next to the extra fridge. And it goes into the finished side of the basement, which is basically just a spare bedroom and bathroom but we don't really use so my daughter ends up playing in there a lot and then of course we just have some building supplies stored here as well and then along this back side this was where i was keeping my extra 
bags and dance bags and my extra wreaths that I would put out seasonally, but I haven't used those in a while. So that could be another batch of decluttering that needs to get done. And then of course, we're back to the stairs that head upstairs. So let's grab this box and we'll take this upstairs and just talk about the last little bit of what we want to talk about today. So there you have it, the full tour of my messy, cluttered, overflowing basement. So now you can see just how much is still left to go. But like I've been saying, the fact that I'm making progress each week gives me hope that I can keep going. And I know that it's a sustainable method because I don't get overwhelmed and I don't get... Sorry, it's harvest season and so there's either grain trucks going up the street or that was a tractor hauling grapes from one of the vineyards. So it's a loud time of year as far in terms of the traffic going up the street by my house. Anyway, it gives me hope. I know that I can keep going and even though this process is big and it's a long, slow process, at least I'm making progress each week and I can keep going with it. Sometimes it takes me almost the whole week to just deal with the items I pulled out of that one box. And so I know that if I was trying to do this any faster, I would get overwhelmed and stop and it would just become even more of a mess than it already is. So I'm gonna keep going. I really appreciate you sticking along with me. If you've been here since box number one, leave me a comment and let me know. I know some of you are probably just joining me for the first time. So I encourage you to go back and watch the playlist if you wanna see where this all began and the process along the way. Some of the boxes took a lot of time and a lot more effort and others, like I mentioned, were very easy, but I am so grateful to Sunday Dawn for hosting each week and giving me this space and the supportive community where we each just encourage each other. Everyone does the best they can. We pop in and out because it's an open collaboration. So you'll see a little bit different collection of videos each week, but I love joining along and knowing that we're all making a little progress and making our homes a little better with each tiny tidy. So thanks again for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button down below. I will be back on Friday with another beautifully organized in 52 weeks video. And on Sunday, I'll be back to share some planning in my Jane's Agenda Disc Bound Planner. If you have any specific things about my planner that you're curious or you want me to go into a little more detail, definitely let me know. Other than that, have a good one. Enjoy this beautiful time of year and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. How some of the boxes took a lot more. Sorry, there was literally a squirrel on the deck. <laughs>